Having got the first rough out done on this youth flight bow, I've looked at some of my other flight bows for reference, which is always a handy thing to do. Uh, and they come up to my nose roughly, which is sort of there. And relative to that big knot, that's not too bad. So I'm allowing a bit extra because this is self you, whereas the other flight bows I was looking at was um, bamboo back to you. And again, always add a few inches extra because you can saw it off later, but you can't put it back on. So I'll be losing about six inches, six or seven inches off the end of the stave. Then I'll lay out another string line across it and we'll have another look. Right, looking at the string line now, you can see we're coming over on the slopey side here a bit, which is a shame. If I pull it here to where it's straighter, it takes us a bit near to that right hand edge, which we don't want. So I'm going to have to come across a bit here. Also, I want to keep away from this side where the knot is. So something like that is probably optimal. Now it looks like I'm very close to that, to this edge, but I've left plenty of width, so we should be all right. I'll stick a let's measure on it. We're probably going to be looking at a finished width of say 25 millimeters. And in actual fact, you see we've got about 17 there so we've actually got a reasonable amount of width even at that thin point there we're 15 so that would give us about 30 millimeters wide so you can see the virtue of leaving plenty of width my first rough out took it to 50 millimeters wide near as damn it but that's allowed for the various inex inexactitudes of having a log uh, there's Emily fettling my target boss. So that's marked out for me second rough out. And of course some of you may say, oh but I haven't got a bandsaw. Well that doesn't matter, you can do it all with a, an axe, a draw knife, whatever. And you works quite easily. The main advantage to the bandsaw is it's a bit quicker. But also it doesn't jar my elbows anymore. I mean my elbows are rather tender due to playing badminton and golf so I do appreciate the, the energy saving aspects of the bandsaw but there's now that can't be done without hand tools and you can see it's sitting quite nicely on the bandsaw table because I'd prepared that flat lower edge so my reference face is effectively this face and the face that it's resting on so that's sort of squaring up the back you can see at the far end it's sloping that way and at this end it's sloping that way so on average it's as flat as I can get it and yes you can see it's pretty flat square in the middle so I'll carry on roughing that yeah, out it's certainly looking a bit straighter now and a bit more like a bow We can see the sapwood is quite a nice thickness all the way along. It looks fatter on this edge because of the slope. But you've got to bear in mind this is going to be a flight bow and so it will have very narrow tips. It's easy to lose sight of how big a log is when you're roughing it down. It's always a bit of a narrow point there but it only looks narrow because the rest of the log may be huge so you can, oh blimey these tips are getting a bit small now aren't they let's actually measure it no they're 22 millimeters don't know if that's showing up properly or near as damn it an inch so i've still got nearly an inch of width at the tips so i've got plenty of timber it's all about proportion it's still a bit straight on this um this edge here but still got an inch of tip width we're getting there and now you can see looking down here I can do a second cut getting the um, the thickness into size what's really nice though is you can see how this knot 
is beginning to disappear. But there's the edge of it. So with any luck, by the time this is narrowed to proper final flight bow dimensions, that will have disappeared and the sapwood will be looking a lot thinner. I, I may thin it a little near the tips, but I want to try and keep it whole if possible. Right. Here we are, just to give comparison, what I've got here is my 50 pound bamboo backed U flight bow. So you can see how much spare width we've got. We've got plenty of width there and you can see the tips. Gives you an idea how slim they're going to be in the final bow. And if we look at thickness, you can see the bamboo back one's got a little bit of built in reflex, only an inch or so, but this won't have being a U stave. But people ask, well, how thick do I need to make a you know a bow of a certain weight? Well, how thick do I need to make an 80 pound U flight bow? Well, the answer is just a little bit thicker than a 50 pound U flight bow. You can see I've got enough meat at the grip and I've got to come down substantially thin at the tips. But you could also see that I'd be in danger of getting rid of all the heartwood, which is why sometimes you do need to thin sapwood at the tips, despite all the people saying oh you must leave a single growth ring of sapwood and all this that, and the other but this gives me some idea so I can draw a pencil line showing where I want to rough out the thickness but I'll follow I'll sort of follow the curve natural flow of the bow get that line drawn in and saw it out again so what I'll do is I just use my finger rest my finger against the back of the bow there like that, that finger. Hold the pencil like that and just follow it down, gradually opening up the gap as I go. So it's hard to do it with one hand while I'm holding a camera, but you get the general idea. And I'll just sketch it in by hand, whiz it through the bandsaw, but it will still be vastly too thick. I'm not getting it down to final dimensions, I'm just getting it roughed. You can see here where my roughing outline is going to be. We'll actually be taking that knot out, which is nice. You can see it's a very scruffy line because what I do is I, I pump the pencil back and forth to sort of average out the line, average out any irregularities. And again, when I saw out, I'll, I'll saw the scrap side of the line. There we go, you can see. We've got a bit more tape on it now. It's looking a bit more like a bow. Most of that, um, the channel down the middle's disappeared, but we've still got some of this funny area, probably where the original rot started that split off that ring. So hopefully that won't be a problem. But you never know. But the joy of making a bow with a, a log is as one problem is removed, like that knot has now gone, another is exposed. There's a, a knot going through that way. In fact, I don't know if you can see that moving. But can you see that moving as I waggle it with a pencil? That will pick out, that will get filled. Probably won't be a problem. It's starting to look quite nice. Now our friends the other side of the big pond, what they tend to do is floor tiller, which is sort of flexing it on the ground, they'll sort of stick their knee against the middle and lean on it, see how it bends. I'll have a little go at that, but what I tend to do is just cut in some temporary knocks, get it straight up on the tiller. The other thing you'll notice is I haven't touched the bark. That way I'm not damaging that surface at all, so it will remain pristine. The other thing is as I start flexing it, it will start cracking off and popping off and scaring the living daylights out of me. But also the way it cracks gives you an idea of how the bow is stressed. If you get a nice even series of cracks across the back of the bow, you can tell the bow is bending evenly. And where it first starts to crack, that's where most of the bend is. So it's like sort of nature's strain gauge. Anyhow, I'll lean on this. I can't really show it whilst holding a camera, but 
let's put my knee there and lean on it. Yeah, I can see it, I can feel it flexing. Yeah, it's alive, but um, it's not moving too much. I've got plenty of grunt there left. Onwards and upwards. It's got a hint of natural deflex, which I don't mind. This is the thin strip that came off the last roughing cut on the belly. So you can see it's very thin. So I didn't take a huge amount off. Uh, and you see there's that dodgy place where the disease started on it. And you can see it wouldn't have taken long to take that off with a draw knife really. So the band saw isn't entirely essential. So what I've been doing here, working with the draw knife, I've just chamfered off the corners off the belly a little bit, uh, taken out some of the tool marks, just a little bit of tidying up, cleaning up. Uh, then I'll file in some temporary knocks and get it on the tiller. But you can see a few things are coming to light, nice and clean and white that side. But as I turn it over, you can see it's a sort of browner, streakier colour and there's this bit of disease or rot or whatever there but it's not too bad I mean it'll be near the end of the bow so it's probably all right and again the bow will be narrower I'll try and narrow it towards the clean side but yeah you can see it, it's getting more and more tapered that's one end yeah File on some temporary knocks, slip on a long string, just, just to see how it flexes. I'm not going to go mad, but just to, just to have a look and to decide which is going to be the upper limb, which is going to be the lower limb. Yeah. There's the draw knife I use. It was a, an eBay find. One of the handles was split off. I had to rebuild it and sharpen it, of course lovely tool to work with the draw knife you can rip off vast amounts of wood easily or very fine shavings well you can with you i mean you's beautiful to work with something like ash or hickory it's a damn sight tougher not to mention osage which has rings alternating like cast iron and chalk so um, anyhow enough of that this is just a first flex on the tiller it's way too sick at the ends but I'm just pulling it to see which end is going to be the upper limb and which is the lower limb. There'll probably be some horrendous cracking noises which will just be the bark popping off so don't, don't panic. There you can hear the bark going and I can see it lifting up on it. <laughs> That's fun isn't it? Yeah, there you go. 60 pounds. That'll do, 60 pound, that will over strain it. Uh, actually that limb looks a bit stiffer, there's a weakish, quite a bit of bend here, not too much there. But you'll see what I mean about nature's strain gauge, it shows you where the strain is. Most of the bend was here, and that's where the bark's lifted. And oh look, isn't that beautiful? You don't need to try and take the bark off and risk damaging the back. Look at that, absolutely perfect. Didn't take me a lot of work either, did it? <laughs> Look at that, peels off. So it also shows how I, how I tend to tiller. I'll get the middle moving first, then go outwards. I think that's quite a satisfying second stage to making the bow. I think I've earned a nice cup of tea now.